Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Flow Show. I hope everyone can hear me okay today. Morning, Kate. Can I hear you today? Good morning, Ryan. Do you hear me? Do you read me? Yes, we do. Everyone's loud and clear. Good old. Good stuff. Whatever. Afflicted my uh, machine yesterday is all fixed and fine and dandy. So all good. Right. Big day today, CPI day, the biggest day since the last biggest day, which was about two days ago. And uh, we shall get into what's coming up for that one. But let's uh, get into what's happened overnight uh, and since yesterday. Uh, over in good old China, um, apparently Chinese government has asked local government to cut private and public projects. Um, this story apparently dropping because of high debt levels in local government um, centres around China. But, uh, all these projects they're going into are getting them heavily in debt. Um, so they want to stop these projects. And uh, But on the flip side, there was a headline out saying that uh, they're going to be looking at China's going to be looking at uh, injecting 137 billion in new funding for the housing market, um, which... It's not real new news, uh, although maybe we finally got a number on it. Uh, they've been threatening this all year, um, but Bloomberg decided it's quite enough to drop that in, and that saw um, dollar China dip a little bit uh, on that headline. Um, the China Security Journal says that they may cut the reserve requirement ratio again this year. Um, again, one of the things that has been touted since the last RRR cut um, and uh, also other rates uh, may be getting cut as two, the MPI, LPR. Uh, we've got the LPR this weekend, um, so we'll see if they decide to tinker with that one as well. Um, speaking of cuts, um, over in Japan, they are still looking at corporate tax cuts or tax breaks, um, according to Yumi Yuri. The last headline we had a week or so ago was that uh, they, would, they would consider the government would consider tax breaks, corporate tax breaks, um, if wages were 5% or more. Well, now, you and say that the watermark for that is 8% wage hikes, which is a which would be absolutely huge uh, if it's generalised across uh, a lot of the sectors. Um, so that, according to you and is the bar set for those uh, tax breaks if they happen. Um, our mate Suzuki was out and about uh, answering questions on FX, same old guff, um, would refrain from commenting on the FX level to avoid impact. I'm not sure what impact he's looking at, um, apart from putting a number on it. Um, says the government will take the appropriate response on FX and then throw out all the usual uh, jawbone bingo, as we might call it. Um, need to move in line with fundamentals, blah, 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 blah. blah. Um, so no change on the uh, DEFCON level for jawboning at the moment. Uh, BOJ's uh, Yujida also out saying he won't comment on FX levels either. Um, he says that the Bank of Japan is aiming for price rises accompanied by wage hikes. And it's key whether wage rises or wages rising will support consumer spending. Uh, BOJ's Masaki says he doesn't see long-term interest rates to greatly exceed 1%, even with the rising pressure on yields. Um, well, they're in charge of keeping it uh, from exceeding 1%, so that's a bit of an open uh, open door comment on that one. Uh, SMB Jordan, we will not hesitate to tighten monetary policy further if needed. Um we're well in the rate cut game, as I'm sure you're aware by now. We've been touting it uh, happening long enough um, over in Sweden. SEB economists, that's uh, Seb Bank, that's the Skandinaviska Elsbank, uh, no, was it Elskilda Banken Elskilda. company? Yeah, Elskilda Banken. Let's say uh, Scandi. Bank. Yeah, Scandi's. Uh, so they uh, expect the Riks Bank to cut rates in September 2024. Um, I might start noting down all these calls because uh, these early calls are not going to have much effect on the market, it, but it's if they start uh, coming closer and closer uh, in, depending on the data, that we're probably likely to start seeing some real moves about. But everyone's getting their little ducks in order. So uh, Seb see uh, Riks Bank cutting in September 2024. 
just to keep it on the uh, cut expectations, gold is um, don't see a US rate cut until Q4 2024 due to strong GDP growth. Um, then from that point, they see a cut per quarter um, through to middle of 2026 for a total of 175 basis points in cuts. Uh, Morgan Stanley, they see things being cut a bit faster. They expect the first Fed cut in June 2024, then in September, and then uh, every meeting from the fourth quarter onward, all in 25 pit cuts. They're looking for a rate of 2.375 by the end of 2025. Um, so as you can see, there's a lot of people coming out with their, with their cut estimates now and uh, a lot of variation between yes. them. Yes, mate. Have you seen UBS? Uh, no, I haven't yeah, seen UBS. Not, they call for oh, uh, yeah, did, yeah. Cuts, cuts in March. And, uh, 375 pips or something, wasn't it? They yeah, looking for? Like, uh, yeah, they are going for the uh, full Monty and uh, Fed nearly back to uh, back to pre, uh, not pre-pandemic. Uh, oh, yeah, somewhere pre-pandemic rates were very, very quickly. So UBS is the boldest call there. Uh, but yeah. then, yeah, they're Swiss. And they, and they hired uh, people from pretty Swiss, probably. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, uh, there's nothing until we hear from Numora, who, as I said uh, yesterday in the room, will probably be calling for negative rates by uh, next March and QE by uh, April. Um, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. But uh, what, as I mentioned, what we look for, what I'll be looking for in is, is, is if the, at the moment the market isn't really listening to all these bank moves, but the market starts to get too extreme dovishness compared to the fundamentals. That's potentially going to be the first trading opportunity I'm going to be looking for to, to fade on that. But uh, at the moment, as I say, everyone's just lobbing out their ducks um, and seeing if they line up. So we'll get an idea. It gives us an idea of roughly what the market is potentially looking at. Um, but as already mentioned, they're all over the shop, um, three banks and three different calls. So we should have to wait and see. Um, right, just coming back uh, to the UK, and I've uh, got a bit of data out this morning, uh, some of the jobs data, um, because they're still faffing around with this. Um, and and uh, speaking to uh, Michael Brown, my mate Michael Brown yesterday, and uh, the reason we're not getting all this data is because no one's responding, the survey people, the people who've been surveyed for this data are not responding, or there's a lack of response. Um, so either everyone's bored with telling them what's going on or whatever, but uh, they're having to scratch around to find out what exactly is going on in the ONS. Um, so we get what data we can. So it's mainly wages data and um, unemployment rates and uh, claim and count stuff. So really on, on the employment stuff, a um, little bit better. Um, the unemployment rate didn't tick up again. Um, it was expected to go up another pip. It stayed unchanged. So that's in one way good news. Um, Claimant count was up a little bit uh, heavy, 17.8, so a little bit negative there. But the three-month rolling employment change showed a gain of 54,000, was expected to drop nearly 200,000. So that's a, a little bit of a boost there. Um, on the wages front, um, headline wages came in at 7.9%, so hotter than expected, but still confirming a drop um, from last month's 82 but still sticky, sticky, sticky. Um, the X bonus number coming in as expected, 7.7% versus 7.9% prior. So a little bit of easing. Um, if we see uh, inflation coming down further, then that pushes the UK into uh, population to real further, real in uh, wage gains, um, which have been pretty negative for a, a lot of the year. Um, in respect to these numbers coming down, they're still very hot. I would have been expecting this to come down a lot uh, faster. Um, but it just shows there's still a lot of price pressures, wage pressures uh, in there. Still got some industrial action going on uh, around the grounds. So, uh, yeah, just something we need to keep an eye on because it just might mean that inflation stays a bit sticky as well. Um, over to Germany. Um, well, let's go through some of the other data first. You can see some of the Swedish data there, CPI. Again, sticky, sticky, but not as much as expected. Was expected to rise. Two pips came in unchanged, still well up. Um, most of the measures there well up. That one went a bit higher. Um, the constant interest rate one. PPI, Switzerland, again, 
little bit uh, higher, not down as much as expected on the year. So you're getting the message now. Um, these were the final numbers from Spain, so largely unchanged there. Still well above ECB's targets. Um, bit of a surprise from the uh, German ZU numbers. Um, economic sentiment coming in at 9.8, much larger than the five expected. And the first gain in six months, the first positive number in six months. Um, however, current conditions still looking pretty awful at minus 79.8. And the euro took a bit of uh, solace from those German numbers. Um, GDP wasn't anything to write home about. Uh, 0.1% uh, on the year, minus 0.1% on the quarter, bumping along the road. But there was a bit of positive uh, sentiment from the Eurozone Zoo, which also saw a decent jump. So, yeah, the euro took uh, a little bit of a leg up on that, Kay. What do you make of the data? Yeah, end, of, um, uh, end of the negativity time? Time to well, pricing more hikes? <laughs> um, um, okay, it was expected for the for the zoo uh, to, to come up a little bit, but uh, we do have a uh, a bit of a beat on uh, on the sentiment there. It's a bit like Mark said in the room, like uh, current situation is uh, dreadful, but uh, there's hope. <laughs> uh, it reminds me of those, uh, of of the uh, Japanese manufacturing numbers. Uh, they call the, most of the time come out uh, pretty poor, and, but uh, the next month is always expected to, to print uh, plus three and a half or five and a half percent or so. Um, but yeah, I, the thing, what I also said is that if you're just ahead of those uh, US data, and I just, something I noticed is that uh, people seem to take a little bit of refuge into the, the second biggest block. Um, not not necessarily because the data are, are really good, but today, today uh, they, they, they've been helped by those data. Um, but it looks as if the Euro is, is kind of used to, um, to steer away from too much, too much uh, dollar exposure, perhaps um, versus the others, um, and and we see those euro crosses stick up, uh, and and that happened regularly before uh, ahead of uh, U.S. data. So perhaps this afternoon, um, if the if the CPI overshoots in in the U.S., that that euro move could be uh, undone. But um, some just something I noticed that that has happened over uh, over the past um, months, really. Um, yeah, for the rest, it's um, still hopium, but as we've also said, um, at one stage, they have to hit the worst, and just perhaps the worst is over for now. Um, we don't expect a huge uh, or, or a very, very severe uh, winter, although we, we cannot always rely on, uh, on, uh, on those forecasts, but... Um, it may just be that a mild winter can turn around some of the some of the European and and specifically the German data, which is um, which is one of the engines, of course, of uh, of Europe. So um, yeah, I, it it hasn't gone by unnoticed. Uh, Euro dollar ticked up about what twenty five points or so, um, and then all the Euro crosses are higher. So uh, despite pretty decent numbers out of the UK. If you take the revisions into account, um, euro sterling is still higher from where we were <laughs> pre-numbers. Um, the one thing that um, I took from the Jordan comments in the SNB, and that's why I'm keeping a very close eye on that euro Swiss, um, is that yes, he did say he did repeat all, all the um, warnings that they could continue to hike and etc. Uh, etc. Et but then he did add this time that they may be in an okay place. They need to, of course, be data dependent like everybody. But this is one of the first times, if I recall correctly, over the, over the whole cycle that he said that they may kind of be where they wanted to be if there are no big surprises uh, um, on the upside for inflation or um, or, or other numbers. So um, I, th I found it just that little bit interesting uh, um, in his comments. Um, and that's it for the rest. I mean, so somebody, I mean, somebody has to tell Bank of Japan uh, that uh, they, they should stop being, uh, they, I think all those people are long dollar yen or short yen, uh, at the Bank of Japan, because they they really they really are very counterproductive for 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 the yen, right? Yeah. Saying that uh, they they don't expect the long term uh, yields to go above one percent. That's what the market kind of 
expects as well. But if you're Bank of Japan and you're giving the market uh, another reason to slap the yen, um, it's not really going to help uh, your importers and uh, and even your economy because everything you import is uh, is is going is is getting more and more expensive, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, yeah, it's this. Well, we still got to sort out this candor business as well. Um, Why well, around there, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think it has to do with the Japanese um, mentality, pride. Yeah. You know, they, 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 it, it doesn't, it doesn't really look good to, to, to have to uh, uh, let, let one such uh, important person uh, go. So I think uh, that's one of the reasons why they are very quiet about it. Yeah, they don't suffer scandals uh, like you would. You don't get scandals every day over there like you do over here and yeah. uh, elsewhere. So it's a, it can be a, a bit of a big deal, but uh, we'll see what comes from that. Um, now back to some of the squawkers, there's been too many, thankfully. Um, ECB's Kazakh says uh, that he sees no clear peak uh, in wage growth yet. Um, uh, there's a risk of that spilling over to inflation. One of the big uh, hawks at the ECB there, he's uh, constantly worried about uh, inflation and uh, the potential for more hikes to come. Um, we have had a central bank talking about cuts. Uh, the Mexico central bank, uh, Rodriguez, Governor Rodriguez, saying easing inflationary outlook means that they could start discussing possible rate cuts at future meetings. That was in the uh, Mexican press, um, but added the caveat that any rate cuts would be gradual and would not necessarily imply a cycle of continuous reductions um, and that they're not expecting to start talking about rate cuts this year um so getting the one central bank getting it primed up getting it teed up and uh, potentially ready to go but then giving the conditions for those cuts and that's probably a good indication of what uh, every central bank is going to talk like these cuts are not cuts for um they're not going to be potentially a cycle it's getting rates back to neutral levels um rather than just cutting because growth is falling off a cliff um the, the trade's going to be where the growth does fall off a cliff and then they need to keep cutting past neutral um, to inspire growth. Um, that's the tightrope these guys are walking at the moment. Um, New York Fed had uh, some ex expectation surveys out. Uh, the consumer largely doing OK. Um, inflation expectation for one year dipping a pip or 10 pips to 3.57% from 3.67%. Um, so that's one metric showing falling inflation expectations. We've seen them going up in the other consumer sentiment surveys out of the US. Um, over on the uh, our game of can kicking uh, 2023, the US House is to vote on a stock gap funding bill today. Um, we'll see what uh, that brings there. Okay, got any other uh, headlines swinging across your peepers? No, just a reminder that the uh, APEC uh, conference starts in, uh, in in San Fran today. So we're expecting the, the Xi Biden meeting uh, tomorrow, but uh, I guess we will start to get uh, doorstep, uh, doorstep comments um, rolling in from, from this afternoon, probably. Um, and um, I think that's... Uh, that's about it, right? You covered all the rest, um, or, or any any way what's in, what's important. Um, I don't know if there's any um, individual stock watchers among our uh, um, audience, but uh, note that uh, at the Dubai Air Show, uh, Boeing struck uh, uh, struck uh, some uh, some really juicy deals. Um, I don't know if uh, the company already reacted to it, their stock, but. Uh, just that, just on the side of things, um, know that uh, those those big airline companies uh, are, are striking new deals, but uh, Boeing is uh, seems to be taking the lead on that one. Yeah, and uh, DHL apparently they're expanding over in uh, I think it's Hong Kong they're expanding, and they're also looking at new aircraft. So a bit of a pick me up for the airline sector over there. Uh, and when you get logistic companies like DHL looking to expand their fleets, that gives you a bit of an indication. That they don't see any big growth worries on the horizon because um, if they did, if they saw activity dropping, they wouldn't be splashing out on new planes. Um, although that deal may happen over the course of a couple of years. Um, 
Right, let's take a quick look at uh, what's coming from the US CPI. So we're all up to speed on that one. Headline CPI expected to drop back to 3.3% from 3.7%. Uh, the core, uh, the all important core, expected to come in unchanged at 4.1%. Um, so what's the uh, real price risk here? Well, the market is, you know, it's it's one day it's up, one day it's down. One day growth is good, then you get a, a softer number and it's a bit wobbly. Um, we know the market is pricing cuts, so this is what these numbers are going to be. Um, anything that's, that's hotter, the core higher, um, CPI not coming in as low as expected, um, is going to fall into the Fed's rhetoric or you know we heard from powell slightly more hawkish at his last outing so that might see the dollar rally yields rally um hike expectations rallying as well whether that's lasting or not is another matter um what i think would happen is we're going to get more rate cut talk if these numbers come in softer than expected particularly on that core number even if it comes at in at four or it's below 3.9 um that'll be enough to say push the foot, uh, uh, last hike further off the table and uh, all the cutters uh, will be getting their tipex out and uh, rejigging their numbers. Um, just keep half an eye also on um, the earnings numbers as well, just to see if there's uh, any pullback from what we saw via the NFP data as well, because these numbers get uh, updated here also. Um, what are you thinking for this one, Kay? It's really a coin toss, really. Could uh, inflation go up a bit or uh, are we heading much lower? I mean, we were talking about it briefly in the room this morning. It's it's really, uh, I've seen both of both sides of the expectations uh, being being called. Um, I, I, it's really, uh, for me, it's a, it's a flip the coin. Um, if, if shelter really, um, comes off then then that's going to have a pretty big impact on those on those numbers but then um other uh, other articles are talking about uh, health insurance prices going up which would uh, in turn uh, uh, push inflation a bit higher and uh, it's it is really a flip the coin i think the market is very willing to trade weaker data um in line may not move the market much and i'm taking a a, a Bit of a sticking my neck out there a bit, uh, um, but it's all going to be about what the, what the results are after the thing because we we are as we know not too far away from uh, from quite important levels on 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 U.S. yields and uh, it's really uh, for me it's a it's a toss the coin. Um, I'm I'm actually not having uh, well apart from my long term silver, but that's a completely different position. I'm. I, I don't have anything in dollars um, going into to today's numbers. And, and I'm, I'm actually already thinking that uh, in line with what we saw uh, past weeks and even a couple of months, that, that the more medium term players may be waiting for a package like CPI, retail sales, PPI out tomorrow, um, those kind of things, you know, and then uh, and then take a direction. Uh, and, and we are going to have not too much more than algo blips today. Um, but yeah, I, I I think the market really wants to see um, lower CPI numbers because that may be the easier trade, sell dollars and buy bonds. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but that's about it. I think if it's a, if it's an overshoot, and I'll have a look at the S and P, um, then we are perhaps at, at danger, in danger to to have seen a bit of a um, recovery top there in uh, in in the S and P if the numbers are really higher. But I. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm going to react in, instead of anticipate, really. Yeah, as we said at the beginning of the week, this is another week where you you probably got to take everything as a whole and see where you are at the end of it. Uh, but the market's going to move between and between each data point anyway. I think for trading, you we want to see big variations. You know, as Casey did, coming in round expected, um, probably not much of a move um, to be had, but. That's why you need to look at what markets are doing going into these numbers. You know, we know Euro is uh, looking particularly strong at the moment. So, you know, if there's not uh, too much of a hot number or too much of a soft number, maybe you get a dip in the Euro. That will be the way the, the side to look to maybe fade. But there's going to be enough uh, rally sellers if the data is a bit hot as well. So 
yep, just roll with the punches, pick your levels, or uh, sit on your hands and, and wait to see uh, what comes of it. Um, so that's uh, that's the data for that one anyway. Um, let's look at some of the price moves and a bit of fun and games yesterday um, in uh, dollar-yen, right on the option expiry. Um, just sitting here and suddenly it's uh, trading in 151.90s and the next minute it's trading 150 down here, 151.20. Um, and the usual speculation coming out, everyone rushing around trying to guess what it was. The wires popping up saying it was uh, intervention risk. Some saying it was the options. Um, the fact that it happened right on expiry time um, suggests there might have been some option related stuff going on there. Um, it wasn't a big expiry yesterday by any uh, by any means, um, but you never know uh, the stuff that we don't see um, there as well. So we had a bit of a, a cage shake, if you like, a tree shake, got the market a little bit nervous, and I think that set the tone now. The market just a bit nervous, a bit like when we were up at uh, 150 originally and we got that uh, move down that everyone thought was intervention. Um, the market is a bit nervous. We've been saying it all through this move. You know, you don't want to you don't want to be buying it up here in case something like that happens. Um, and you've got to be careful with shorts because nothing's happened. But if you manage to get some pips out of that, you did very well. Um, but uh, you don't look the gift horse in the mouth. Um, so for now, we've, we're have we holding below the highs. We can't get back up to those highs because I think that nervousness is in play at the moment. Um, people looking at that and thinking, what the hell? And it just shows you any little twist and turn up here, people are ready to hit that sell button, get out, ask questions later if, if they're long. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess we're here waiting to see what the CPI does. As I mentioned, it's it's gonna. I think we might be sitting up for similar as what happened at 150, where you know if we can't get through this, and if we get hot CPI numbers, and we can't get through this level up here 152, then we might be sitting up for a similar bit of uh, consolidation below and needing another trigger to get us through it. But you never know. We could get a break uh, over the CPI, and then I'm talking rubbish. Um, but for now. I think there's a bit more nervousness uh, in this pair for the moment. Um, so, yeah, euro dollar climbing back up over 107. I'm not getting too excited about this move either, um, unless we get back above or we'll have a crack at this prior high and this level up around the FIB, um, which has been the resistance point after recent breaks of 107. Um, then I'm not going to get too excited because it just means we might be ranging but look to see if we get a bit of support coming into 107 on the test um we've had a go previously to try and build it but it hasn't lasted so we're not out the woods which way this one wants to go although it is maintaining its uh, bullish bias for now um so keep an eye on that one the commods um dk and i remember asking why are commods looking fairly weak uh, around the grounds um you can you can pick a few of them if you like aussie CAD not looking too good as well, still looking a bit weak. And that's even while oil's, again, just creeping up uh, a little bit. You know, we, we're moving further off the bottom, looking a bit more bullish, but uh, it's still all small stuff uh, until we start taking out some of these uh, bigger levels out here. What are you making of uh, commodities? I'm putting on a, put you on the spot now. Um, he wanted some clever heads to tell him what was going on. Um What's going on with commodities? Just a weak growth story, no reason yeah, to. Um, okay, as you showed there, oil is uh, oil is rebounding, but we are still um, pretty much below uh, below bigger levels. Um, the Kiwi has been uh, weighed down by uh, by weaker data that we saw end of last week, start of this week. Um, the Aussie is a bit. In, in in the in the middle of the road uh, between those two because it's actually strengthening versus kiwi and uh, um mildly strengthening versus canadian dollar as well uh, on the crosses and so the the aussie is a little bit in uh, in the middle there and is and is likely um yeah going to follow risk and uh partially between risk partially between uh uh between uh, what's happening uh, what's happening to the dollar and um um, I think is it overnight that we will have um, the Aussie Labour report, or is it next? 
Let me see. No, it's actually from Wednesday into Thursday for us. So um, it's it's tomorrow night <laughs> that we have the um, Australian uh, Australian unemployment report. So that may be a mover. But yeah, that's somewhat that's somewhat somewhat in the middle of the road. Um, the thing is as well, com commodities are weak, but it, it's it's also a factor of the euro being strong because you can um, you can look across the grounds and. Yeah, you it come out some weak versus versus euro, but then euro is strong versus everything. Uh, we are, after all, uh, not more than, than 25, 30 points away from the highs in euro sterling that we have seen over the past months. Um, look at euro Swiss is trying, even, even euro Swiss is trying to rebound, not even talking about uh, about euro yen, but then you see euro Aussie, euro CAD, euro Kiwi, they're all higher, right? So, um, it's a factor of several things. Um, Roberto is asking why uh, euro may be so strong. I think it's it's a fact. We, we we've been talking about things like that, like uh, in relationship to the to the Chinese yuan as well. You know, one one at one stage data come out as they were expected, being weak, but the market is try is is trying at least or starting to perceive that we may have hit the bottom. And, and that's where the market also always try to anticipate, oh, it, it can only get better from here. And, and, and I reckon that is one of the reasons why the euro is perhaps on the strong side right now. And also, um, as Ryan already mentioned as well, ECB started to hike after the Fed. And some market participants must have uh, like being uh, perhaps short euros and things, and then now starting to think, oh, but if if the numbers start to accelerate to the downside in the U.S. block, we we may actually put a little bit more money in the euro versus versus the U.S. And uh, you have those subtle flows um, that we don't always see. But if you look at stuff for the DAX, for like the DAX, for instance, the DAX is is relatively strong, right? And and we may see a bit of rebalancing between uh, between markets. And uh, um, I'm not saying it's going to continue. I'm not saying that euro is going to trade to 110. But we have to, if you look at the global picture, we have to acknowledge that since we hit 105 on the euro a couple of times, that thing is holding pretty well and better than other currencies. Um, and that's why those those euro uh, crosses tend to to go to go higher. Um, but yeah, uh, back to uh, the commodities. Um, yeah, I think the explanation is is really in uh, in in the Kiwi data. Um, Canada, there's there's also a bit of housing uncertainty lingering there in the background. Um, but for the rest, yeah, you know, markets uh, come and go, and uh, for the time being, uh, the the markets are probably getting more out of positions than than entering new positions. Yeah, and uh, you've also got to look at the the rate divergence as well. You know, with the, with the ECB around the four percent mark, and you got everyone else in the five percent rates. There's there's potentially more cutting to come from those than there is from the ECB. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, everyone's everyone's been talking about recessions here, recessions there, um, and that sort of talk can strike a bit of fear into markets. But you know, we've just seen eurozone GDP. Um, 0.1%, uh, minus 0.1%. You know, if, if you get two quarters of, of negative GDP, that's a recession technically. But who's going to give a monkeys if it's two quarters each of 0, minus 0.1%? It's not, it's not the Eurozone collapsing. Um, and I think that's why you need to make this, uh, see the context, make the significance between what is the recession going to look like if there is one. You know, a deep contraction, that's bad news. Um, a minus 0 0.1 recession, pff, pff, couldn't give a monkeys about it. It's not It's not going to tip anyone uh, into QE or anything like that. Um, and we also know about it for months now. Exactly, exactly. We've seen it coming from Germany um, for long enough. They've been the poster boy for, for a week of growth. And, um, you know, we've seen some other countries looking not too bad, Italy and, and Spain and the like, um, not looking too bad. But overall... Um, the block uh, isn't looking overly hot, but not looking disastrous either. So sometimes if, if you know, a lot of moves come on fear of what's going to happen, the worst case scenario, and then sometimes you've got to translate that into prices. If the market's saying recession, 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 
but Euro dollar can't get through 105. Well, that's telling you its own story. It's telling you that the market is seeing something else. Um, and if it ain't going down, there's only one other way it can go. Does it mean we, we can't go down further? Of course we can. Um, I'm still wary of this because we're still below this level here, this 38.2 fib. Get above that, then I'll start to think we're really turning around this trend. But until then, you know, three, four going into next year, we might be coming down and breaking through and making new lows. Who knows? But uh, all we can do is trade the price action. And uh, at the moment, we've got the range, 105s, 107.60s. That's all we need to worry about, uh, unless you want to get messing around in the middle there. Um, I have a quick look at cable, then I'll uh, palm it off to the K-Meister. Um, here we are, back in the middle again. We've had the little move up, we've had the little move down. Now we're back in the middle, 123s. Um, that's our marker. Again, another range play here. Um, I'm not interested in here. 121s or up at 124, 124 and a half. Um, that's my areas of interest. Um, and what it does in the middle, I'll let you guys uh, deal with that one. Um, so, yeah, middle of the road for this one. We know it's been a bit of a level prior, so big figure as well. So no, um, no surprise to see it holding a bit up here uh, at the moment. Um, CPI, we could be back at 124. We could be back at 122. I would think, though, just watching this bounce here, if we do get another move down here, and this is really, really hot hiking type CPI data from the US, I think any dips uh, today are going to get uh, bought up uh, in any pair versus the dollar. That's just uh, my viewpoint on that one. Uh, K-Man, did you want to grab a couple? Yeah, but uh, if you keep uh, keep keep just uh, um, yeah. a minute on that chart, and uh, I was saying in the in the room when we did the dip under 122, it had the same feel as those prior dips below 121, and yeah. it, it could be that your 122 is your new 121. It's just I just want to want to stick on there on on the chart for a minute because I I was all, also looking at it and and you look at those those little prior um, spikes uh, uh, if you look just a little bit left um, it's that one twenty two could become your new one twenty one and uh, that is perhaps something that we need to watch um, over the over the upcoming days really uh, today tomorrow. Um, on, on the on the rest of the data tomorrow and um, this could get really interesting I'd love to see a dip down there um, just to see what's happening there because it's sometimes you know it's just as simple as if people don't get enough what they of what they wanted around 121 or below they move up their bits and uh, regardless what comes out in the, in the data really um, those bits will hold the market so I I, I really think it's it's starting to build up as an interesting level just around that 122 just sub 122 so it's going to be an interesting watch if we crash yeah. through of course then uh then we're talking again about the the, the outside of the ranges but um, i think it's going to be an interesting enough watch yeah thanks mate right, i'll hand it over to you one i'm doing that gordon saying that uh the guindos uh has been touted higher inflation um yeah he was um that's a bit of a uh, an open goal that one because we're coming into winter we know there's going to be price pressures in uh, energy and stuff, particularly for the Eurozone. Uh, so it's not going to be a surprise if we see some inflationary pressure coming into uh, the latter part of the year. So uh, he's not telling us anything we don't know uh, uh, at the moment. Over to you, mate. Right. Yeah. Uh, thanks, guys. Um, so, OK, quick look at the uh, at, at the differentials. We're still not moving a lot, right? This is a sterling and the dollar. We're, st we're still not moving a lot. So this is still pre-data, um, pre uh, wishy-washy, managing the books and uh, et cetera, et cetera. This, I expect, over the next round of data, we have um, UK data tomorrow as well, if I'm uh, not mistaken. Uh, what do we have tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow we have CPI, of course. So expect those differentials to start to move, okay? And depending whether we break above here, this is probably going to be not too far from the 124 if we are uh, back here. And if we start to move uh, uh, above, watch out with the with the cable. And this is probably going to be your 122 again, the down the the underside of the uh, of the differential. So keep an eye on what's happening there after the numbers. Um, 
on the uh, euro side, we had a little bit more of, of a bounce. That explains also your bounce on, uh, on the euro. But again, there, we're still in this kind of block where we've been trading inside uh, over the past uh, uh, months, really. And if you look at the ranges, apart from uh, some bleeps outside, uh, um, some of the boxes on the euro dollar um, helped by those euro crosses, um, but the euro dollar has been relatively stable. And that's what, what I've been saying as well for a while. Um, euro dollar could be relatively stable and the rest gravitating around. And that, that's what makes those uh, euro crosses uh, move as well. At the same time, euro dollar is not really picking a fresh, um, a fresh direction. I do expect these things to move in the next uh, 48 to 72 hours. If you take into account the, um, uh, what, was, what was I going to say? The, the yeah, the claims and stuff and those continuing claims. Okay, um, US tens. This is going to be relatively important for dollar yen, among others. Of course, going to drive everything. Um, but uh, if you want to see dollar yen come down, which for once I would like to see, because I bought a cheeky one fifty and a half put for uh, for a week yesterday. Um, we need to see this this get down back below those prior levels, 453, 450, 447. This is your zone before we can go deeper, uh, perhaps down into the 440s, um, low 440s or even 430s here. Um, for as long as we are staying in this range, probably there's not going to, to be too much happening with the dollar now. If we start to have those, or if we get very sticky numbers here, um, this is your first resistance here, 68, 70 um, on on the on the tens, and then, uh, uh, but but I think the the big level really will be here, 480. I'm not sure that with with CPI data alone today we are going to be able to to get up there. So I would say 68, 72, and then uh, on the underside again those low 450s. Um, watch that. Um, if we get down there on a bit of a weaker CPI, bond market should do well. Equity market should do well. Dollar should uh, dollar should be really on the defensive. If we start to break, then it's uh, bad news for the dollar, I reckon. But again, I'm not sure if CPI has the power to bo to break this. It's it's rather on the short end, probably that we are going to see um, bigger moves if we get a weaker CPI. We, we, for instance, can go and have a look back at what's happening in the 480s on the, on the twos, for instance. Um, I want to show the S&P today. Um, we are hanging around this, uh, this trend line here. And upcoming are another couple of really decent levels in the 4430s and up to 4460. If you get a weaker CPI, but not a, well, well, yeah, if we get a weaker CPI, bond market should rally, the yields should go down, and this should really go and test this higher zone. Um, I imagine, I haven't put a FIP on this, but um, yeah, you see, we are uh, we are hanging around the, around the, the, the 61.8 of the, of the move as well. So that adds a bit of, um, a bit of importance to this zone. If we start to get back below 4,400 on a sticky CPI, um, we have to look at the underside of the of the zone here, and that's uh, 4,330 to 4,350. Okay, so these these are your levels to watch on the S and P. And I think, seen seen, we have had such a, a dynamic uh, uh, move higher. Um, the market is is probably looking at okay, we are going for a retest of this one, but is it going to happen is is uh, is really the question so uh watch out if 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 all of a sudden we see a little bit of a spike and then start to come come down as well okay i expect this one to to move as well um this should be a decent mover before the end of the week i'm going to have a a, a pretty close look at it um ryan already mentioned the cable and the euro dollar i want to have a look at the uh the aussie dollar it looks a bit uh, confusing this chart but uh you know, I I I know where my uh, mess is. Okay, this is a trend line here on the Aussie dollar. This is the Aussie dollar. 
This is the daily, okay? You got the 55 DMA around here. You got the leading span around here. You got the trend line around 64 the figure, and you got the underside of the cloud around 64 the figure. That is an easy enough level, okay, to watch on uh, on the Aussie dollar today and going uh, going forwards in uh, in this week. 64 the figure, pretty easy, big figure, and a lot of action uh, up there. So that's your level to watch for the afternoon and uh, for even the rest of the week to see whether we get closes above, whether we get tests and rejections, et cetera, et cetera. If it breaks, I think then we are uh, probably trading a percent higher in not too uh, far a distance. Kiwi is a bit weak. We had weakening data. Um, we have been trading under this uh, under the 58.90 now uh, for a while, but especially under this 59. Uh, those low 59s, this has been uh, um, um, capping since we, we went below there, um, been going on for uh, for um, nearly a week now. That's 59.10, I reckon, is going to be your uh, your level. If we go back above, then uh, we're probably going to trade back into the mid-59s or 60s on weaker US data. But if you get a bit weaker US data and the Kiwi refuses to go to break above, 58.90, 59.10, then we're probably going to look at, uh, at at lower levels here. As I said, the data are a bit weak in uh, in Kiwi land. Uh, if it's Aussie Kiwi you want to play, we are breaking uh, trend line resistance. We did it, um, I think, yesterday. We broke it. And we are, um, um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's bid, really. Um, Watch for a retest of uh, 108 and a quarter to see if it holds um, for for a move uh, a bit higher. For the time being, I would not counter this um, unless we get a, a weaker uh, a weaker unemployment report out of uh, Aussie land in uh, what is it 36 hours or so. Um, there is yeah, Swissy. If you want to steer away um, from the dollar. Um, Euro Swiss is on a bit of a is on a bit of a mission here. We are entering resistance since we have broken above the trend line, and we have also been supported by the cloud. Um, we are entering a little bit of resistance, ninety six sixty five up to ninety six ninety five. Um, keep an eye on that zone because I found SMB Jordan um, starting to look a, or sound a little bit less hawkish than uh, than it was in the. Um, up to now, and uh, dollar Swiss, on the contrary, if you want to look at the other side of the dollar, is on extremely interesting zone in interesting levels. Okay, so we have, uh, if you look at the um, here the DMAs, right? Um, I'm going to put my cursor here. Everything is happening between 89.95 and 90.08 on the uh, on the on the daily moving averages. We have trend line support around here uh if you go to the four hour we have also the four hour cloud which lies around here as well everything's happening around 89.90 90 the figure on dollar swiss so this is a very um good one to monitor going into the us data as well dollar swiss if we start to break 89.90 this could all of a sudden look very weak or or could accelerate to the downside um that for the schweiz and you know what, Ryan? I have shown what I wanted to show. So I give it back over to you. Thank you very much, mate. Uh, wise words, as always, from your good self. Um, yep, we'll call that uh, a day today. Come and join us uh, on Face uh, in uh, just over an hour and 40 minutes. Uh, you can get even more from the team um, ahead of that CPI data, which will come alive. Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Flow Show. Um, have a great day. We shall see you all tomorrow. Hey traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.